Hello again. We are dealing with the subject of aspects of the Christian faith. And today we're going to talk about the resurrection because we're near Easter and because this is a very important thing to talk about. Because if it's not true, nothing else is true about God or about Jesus. And so we'll talk about it today. And it's number nine in our series of talks. I'm going to read a few verses to you from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. And it's about the resurrection. And this is what it says. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Now when we talk about the resurrection, of course we're talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, because no one else in the history of the world has been resurrected from the dead, but Jesus has. And so we're talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And uh, I want to remind you that the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ follows hard on the teaching, of course, of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Because if Jesus was not crucified and dead, of course, he couldn't be risen. And so the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ forms the heartbeat, it forms the foundation, it forms the very deepest bottom line of the Christian faith. There could be nothing for us to believe in if those two things didn't happen. Nothing for us to give, nothing to give us hope if those two things did not happen. That the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified, he rose from the dead, and then he ascended to heaven and he promised to come back again. Now, last week, if you were with me, we looked at the death of Jesus on the cross. Now, I want to remind you today that when we talk about the resurrection, we're talking about a divine act. I don't know if you are aware of the fact that the Bible teaches that all three persons of the Trinity were involved in the resurrection of Jesus. It's a strange thing to say because the Trinity is a hard thing to understand. But we do read in John chapter 10 and verses 17 to 18 that the Lord Jesus Christ laid down his life and he took it up again. So he raised himself up. But then in Acts chapter 13 and verse 30 we read that God raised up Christ from the dead. And in Romans 1 verse 4 we read that he was declared to be the Son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead. And so the Holy Spirit appears to be the one to have raised Jesus from the dead. So we have the three persons of the Trinity. In other words, we have God himself raising the Lord Jesus from the dead. This is a very serious doctrine and it is attacked by many people. Nobody wants to have a crucified and a living Jesus because that means that there is no other competitor to him, which is what we Christians believe. No one can compete with Jesus. And so when Jesus was raised from the dead, it was not some sort of a pathetic resuscitation of his broken bones on, from the cross. It wasn't anything like that at all. Rather, it was a transformation of Jesus Christ's humanity that enabled him to appear to his disciples, enabled him to vanish and to move unseen from one point to another. That's what we're talking about. The resurrection of Jesus, and so that he got his own human body back, but in a new way. Now, the Son of God who is in heaven at the moment is that resurrected Jesus. And he will come back again, and he will take us back with the same resurrection and we'll have bodies like his. Now this is all really very fairy tale to people who don't believe these things. Well, we don't care what they think. The fact is, it is true. 
Now, I just want to mention some things that are consequent upon this very thing. But first, I want to tell you about a young girl who walked down the street one day. She was a young girl from the streets. She had given herself over to prostitution because of poverty. And one day in the year 1885, she passed a hall, a massive hall, where the great preacher, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, was preaching. Now, he wasn't preaching at a normal church service because this was the middle of the week. Instead, he was speaking to concerned Christian citizens about the abysmal condition of London as it was then. Do not think that London's, when you think about London, that London has always been like you've seen it in Downton Abbey with its mansions and beautiful lawns and wonderful costumes and so on. There were a few privileged people who lived like that. But London, town itself, was grimy and dirty and full of drunkenness and immorality and the most appalling conditions, most appalling sanitary conditions. And it was this that the great preacher was addressing at this time. But this young girl walked past the, she walked past the building and she decided that her life was worth nothing and she was going to throw herself off one of the bridges but as she walked past the building and saw the crowd, she thought to herself, I'll go in and listen to this man and maybe something will be said that will help me when I stand before God after I've killed myself. That's how she thought. So she goes into the building and she can't get in because of the crowd. So she elbows her way in with the kind of force that she learned to use on the streets and she finds herself standing in a very crowded aisle and the crowd closes behind her so she can't get out again. And as she stands there, she met the risen Christ. Now I want you to take that and put it on one side at the moment. We'll come back to it. But I want to tell you what it means to have Jesus Christ risen from the dead. The first is it means that the message of Jesus as judge and saviour is true. If it is true that he was raised from the dead, then it is also true that he will one day be the judge of the world. He's the saviour of the world now, but he will be the judge of the world then. And that's why the Apostle Paul said this in Acts chapter 17. God has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Who is the man that God raised from the dead? Jesus. And he will be the judge of the whole world. So we're not talking about myths here. We're not talking about some sort of folklore. We're not talking about people's excited imaginations or wishful thinking. We're talking about plain historical fact. Christ was raised from the dead. And just as he saves those who come to him, so he will be the judge of those who turn their back on him. That's the first thing I want you to remember, that the message of Jesus is true. If he rose from the grave, everything about him is true. Secondly, I want to remind you that the resurrected Jesus sent his representative to be with us forever. Jesus went back to heaven, but he sent the Holy Spirit to be with us, who represents him, so that we can talk about Jesus being with us and we can talk about the Spirit being with us in the same breath. Because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus and represents Jesus to us in this world so that we can experience him in this world. He dwells with us and he dwells in us. He is our helper and our guide. He gives us support. He advises us, strengthens us, encourages us. He's our ally in the difficult things in life. He's our advocate if we fail. And so the resurrected Lord Jesus is with us to this day by the power of his Holy Spirit. And thirdly, this means that we can experience Jesus truly every single day. In various parts of the scripture, we read that he enlightens us. He regenerates us. He makes us new inside. 
He leads us in the ways of holiness and right living. He transforms us from being people who are, are, are bad people, ugly people, bad-tempered people. Ugly to know, I mean, by way of character and by way of temperament and personality. He transforms us. He gives us assurance of His presence. And He gives us gifts and abilities so we can serve Him. He, he teaches us how to live and how to think. He changes our characters and He gives us the sort of character that we need to call ourselves Christians. He is a very great Savior. Now I want to go back to that young girl standing in that crowd and I want you to think about her for a moment. She's been used and abused all her life. She lives in the poverty-stricken circumstances. She has been called every name under the sun. She has got no hope. She's only 23 years old and she's going to go and throw herself into the river to drown because she feels there's nothing left for her to live for. No one has ever said anything nice to her, anything complimentary. No one has ever built her up. No one has ever spoken to her as a real human being made in the image of God. Standing in that crowd, she met the risen Christ. How did she meet the risen Christ? Well, while she stood there, the preacher, Charles Spurgeon, not knowing that she was there, he reads from this portion of Scripture. It's from Luke's Gospel, chapter 7. And it's a story about a bad woman, a prostitute who came into a feast of a very wealthy man where the Lord Jesus was a guest. She came in unin uninvited and she poured a whole lot of perfume, her most precious possession, over his feet. And then she wiped his feet with her hair and she was criticized for it. She, it was thought, why must she be here? She's a woman from the street. She shouldn't be here. And who is she to touch such a holy man, a woman like that? And this is what Jesus said. Jesus said to his disciples, do you see this woman? Do you see her? You didn't greet me properly when I came into your home. You didn't do all the things that our society demands you do for guests. But she came and she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but he who is forgiven little loves little. And as Spurgeon read out those words, he emphasized these words. Do you see this woman? And it was like for her, someone standing in front of her, pointing his finger at her. And as the great preacher preached on this passage, she felt that her whole life had become exposed to everybody present in that hall. And she burst into tears and wept and wept and wept amongst that crowd as she realized who Jesus was, who, utter, who utters the words of forgiveness to the worst of people. And who was it that spoke to her in that way? Who was it that made all that real to her? Was it the preacher who preached the message? Well, he may have been an instrument, but there was something more. There was something divine. There was something miraculous in it all. And what was it? Who was it? It was the Lord Jesus himself in risen power that met her in the aisle through the presence of the Holy Spirit and spoke to her heart and opened her heart and her eyes and her mind and enabled her to see that life need not be as hopeless as she thought it was, but because there was a Savior who died and rose again from the dead, there was forgiveness and hope for a new life. So that woman was converted, and she became an active member of the great church that Spurgeon established in London, where she was received with great warmth by the congregation. There is no one greater than the resurrected Christ. And when we invite you to come to the Lord Jesus, we are inviting you to come to someone real. 
real, who not only forgives our sins and deals with us spiritually, but lives with us in our daily walk, feels our pains, feels our heartaches, feels our joys, guides us and helps us through all of the intricacies of life and helps us to negotiate life until we come to his end and are ushered into his presence where we enjoy him forever. Jesus Christ, the resurrected Christ. What a saviour we have. Great question is, is he your saviour? And if you're not sure of that, will you not take a moment now to raise your heart to him and to say to him, Lord Jesus, I've never thought about these things so seriously before, but I feel desperately that I need you. Please become my saviour now. Say that to him and you'll be lifted up by the hand of the resurrected saviour. Now God bless you and I hope to see you again next week.